So Modular and Eurorack have a reputation for being kind of like a money pit that doesn't get you any closer to your goals of releasing a track that's actually listenable. Uh, but today I want to kind of put that to the test because that really hasn't been my experience with it at all. Um, certainly now that I've gotten better at it. Uh, you know, in the beginning, there's definitely a learning phase. It's, I kind of see it like learning an instrument where like if you're learning piano and you're playing piano, you know, it's not really directly, it's not really directly affecting your next song that you make. But it like learning piano, you do learn voicings and uh, that has a lot to do with arranging and uh, ultimately mixing in your song. So it's a good idea to kind of have this knowledge. And I feel the same way about a lot of modular stuff. Um, I think it can be really useful um, even if it's not, even if you don't even use it on your song. I think you can learn a lot of production techniques from it. And I know I certainly have. So I'm gonna completely unpatch my system and see how many grooves I can get out of it in about an hour of jamming on it. And uh, my only rule is that I'm not gonna do any four on the floor drum beats because I think they're kind of lame. Along the way, I'll explain some of my go-to techniques for speeding up the modular workflow. And um, some of that is just gear recommendations because having the right gear can make things so much easier. I'm gonna start by writing four sequences on the Moog Matriarch. I feel like three is kind of the minimum, but I'm shooting for four. We'll fast forward it a little bit because this is not really the most interesting content watching me write four little melodies. But since these sequences are gonna run and run and run, I'm looking for things that are pretty melodically neutral. So octaves, fourths, fifths, one four progressions, one six progressions, you know, just simple, simple changes only. This is pure pop because I don't want it to limit me later on. The complexity of the music is going to come from the interplay of all the instruments, not just like one guitar blowing you away. So I want to make room here. Speaking of other instruments, I'm getting pretty mogey here because they sound great and they're extremely well designed. The DFAM is handling the drums because the sequencer is hands on and leans towards the non four on the floor kind of beats. Uh, when it's used as a bass drum. And the subharmonicon is going to play the role of harmony because, well, it's a purpose-built harmony machine and it'll give me a lot of options while mixing well with the rest of the whole moginess. Using the subharmonicon also gives me another advantage. That's that the dials are already somewhat set from whatever I was doing with it before. I really actually have no idea. Uh, but I know that there are two pretty cool sequences in there, so it gives me a leg up. But of course, I don't know if it's in key with what I'm doing right now. But I'm writing these sequences in C, so hopefully that'll be close. Ooh, this is really important. I just made it so the velocity of the DFAM negatively affects the volume of the matriarch. So when the DFAM's loud, the matriarch is always going to be quiet. And that's going to give us a lot of movement to the mix, and it's going to make it so I can kind of control the feel of the song with just the DFAM sequencer. DFAM is running through my tip top Z verb for a touch of delicious ambience. Funny story about that Z verb, I actually got it on reverb for $10. It was crazy. Someone like mislisted their Z verb that they meant to list it for $100, but they listed it for $10 and I caught it. And now I'm like addicted to 
refreshing my reverb feed. <laughs> but I messaged the seller because like it was obviously mislisted and uh, and uh, he was just like happy to make someone's day. He, he actually threw in a free malt and a couple blank panels for me too. It was like the coolest thing ever. Uh, it was pretty unbelievable. Yeah, shout out to that guy. He's out there making dreams come true. And the Subharmonicon is running through the Tip Top Echoes because they seem to love each other. Everything is going to go into my Erica Synth's Fusion Mixer, which has a vacuum tube in it that saturates really nicely. It's a six input mixer. So I'm running it, I'm doing everything in stereo. Um, so like the Matriarch is taking up two inputs, DFAM is taking two inputs, Subharmonicon is taking up two. Since this is a dollar setup, I'm going to need every mixing advantage I can get. And the fact that this mixer saturates is a huge one. When things start getting too loud, they'll start to smear together and push each other out of the way like they're all kind of side chained to each other, rather than the mix just like coming unglued and sounding dumb. I'm still going to try to avoid a bad mix. It's just that this is kind of a safety net and pseudo compressor. You know, you trade off the ability to just dime everything and some of the pristine transients, but you get a great character and a glued mix in return. So I'll take that trade. <laughs>
I'm using Ableton Live a little bit to help me with my mixing because I'm just like listening on headphones and I wanna know what this is gonna sound like on a phone, really. That's like the most important device that this mix sounds good on, uh, honestly. So I, in Ableton Live, I have a simulator that I made. It's just like an EQ curve that uh, I measured myself that simulates my iPhone speakers. So every once in a while, you'll see me reach over there and just check what the mix is gonna sound like through the phone. And uh, that's why I'm doing that. Also, my listening environment is mono because it's easier to mix in mono. Overall, the biggest factor in cutting down the amount of time it takes to get something usable out of your modular is mixing. If the mix is solid and you wrote decent parts, I mean, there's not much else to it. It'll just kind of work. But mixing is also one of the most difficult things to do with all these crazy sound sources. You can use your filters as simple EQs, but I mean, that only gets you so far. The drop in bass that you get from turning up the resonance on a ladder filter certainly cleans up this mix, but spacing everything out in time is absolutely key. All of this stuff would fall into the category of cool sounding modular jams that end up useless without the patch where the DFAM sequencer causes the other elements to duck out. That's part of the reason this mostly Moog system is so powerful. Within the Matriarch mixer, the oscillators duck each other out too, and they'll hide or show the filter resonances depending on their total level. The Subharmonicon and DFAM do something similar on their own too.
Thanks for watching. Have a good one.